Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a timer event to make text flash in your Microsoft Access Forms. For example, want to make a customer flash if they've been a customer for a certain amount of time, like let's say before 1990. Well, there you go. Customer Sense is now flashing because that guy's from 87. If I move to a different record, that guy's from 2000. He doesn't flash. And then later on in the extended cut, I'll show you how to make continuous forms flash too. Today's question comes from Paul from Shropshire in the United Kingdom, one of my platinum members. Paul says, how can I make a text box in my form blink on and off if it has a specific value? Well, Paul, we can do that with a timer event. Now, this is going to take a tiny bit of programming, but don't worry. I'll show you exactly what you have to do. First off, any of you who haven't watched my intro to VBA video, go watch that first. If you've never done any VBA programming, don't worry. It's not scary. I'll walk you through it step by step. Now, go get yourself a copy of my Tech Help free template. It's a free download on my website. You can grab it so you can follow along. Now, let's say, for example, on our customer form here, we want to see if any customer has been in the database. They're an old-time customer. They've been a customer since, let's say, 1990. I want that to flash red so that if I open up a customer's record, one of my sales reps will say, oh, wow, this is an old customer. I want to make sure to take care of them good. You could do the same technique with anything you want. For example, if they've got a family size over a certain number or if their credit limit is you know, below a certain range or whatever. Any value you want, I'm just going to show you how to do it with, with the customer sense. So let's go into Design View, open up the Forms Properties, go to the Event tab, scroll down toward the bottom here, and you'll find something called timer interval and on timer. Now the timer interval means every so milliseconds, every so many milliseconds, this timer event is gonna kick off. It's set to zero, meaning your form doesn't have a timer. Okay, now this is in milliseconds. So if I want this to run every one second, I have to change that to 1000. All right, remember it's milliseconds, okay? Now, what's going to happen every second is whatever I put in this on timer event. All right, go to the build event, pick the code builder, which you know that if you've watched my intro to VBA. All right, now I'm inside the form timer. So what I'm going to say in here is if customer sense is less than 1190, remember we have to put dates inside of those little hashtags, those octothorps, right, to indicate to access it's a date, then do some stuff. And if, all right, what's the stuff? Well, in here is where I'm going to handle my flashing. And I'm going to do that just by changing the background color of that text box. So I'm going to say, if the text box is already white, then change it to red. And if it's not, then change it back to white. So if customer sense dot back color equals VB white, then Change it to red. Customer sense dot back color equals equals VB red. And let's change the foreground color too. Customer sense dot for color equals VB white. Right? We'll do white text on a red background. Otherwise, all right, let's set it equal to what it should be. So let's say customer sense dot back color equals VB white. And then customer, come on, I can't type today. Customer <laughs> sense dot for color equals VB black, right? Black text on a white background. Okay? So every second this is going to run. Okay? If customer sense is less than 111990, then if the back color is white, make it red. Otherwise, set it back to white. And that'll run every second, all right? Now, this shouldn't interfere with anything else that's going on in your form. You can still type, you can still work. If you've got other sophisticated VBA running in the background also, you might have issues with timer events, only with really, really sophisticated events. For most people, for the average user, don't worry about it. All right, as long as this form is open, the timer event will run. When you close the form, it stops running. Okay, let's save it. Control S, close it up. Open up the customer form. Now this customer is 1194. Let's scroll through the customers here. 2003, 1999, 87. Oh, look at that. It's flashing in that party. All right, let's move to the next one. 2000, and it stops flashing. All right, 
and that one's blank, so that doesn't run. Let's go back to the 87 one. I want to show you something that could happen here. Now, be very careful. Watch this. If it's red and I leave it right now, see, it got stuck on the red. See? All right. So we have to have one more tiny event in there. Um, design view. We have to go to the on current event also. On current happens when you move from record to record or when the form opens. So right here, all we're going to say is we're just going to set it back to black and white just to make sure that we don't get stuck with that conditional formatting on. Okay, so, as we, so whenever we move to a new record, we'll automatically get black on white background, and then the timer event will kick in and change it if necessary. All right, so let's go back and test that now. Let's see. Ready? Now let's go to our 87. There we go. I'm going to try and leave it on, on red. And go. And it turned off automatically. All right, so isn't that cool? So you can use this technique for anything you want, any of those fields you want to change. You want to have something flash, change colors, do whatever you want. That's how you do it with a little timer event. Now, unfortunately, this only works with single forms. All right, you can't do this with a continuous form. So if you've got a list of customers, it won't work. Let me show you. Let's go to the customer list. This is a continuous form. If you've never made a continuous form before, go watch my video on continuous forms. I'll put a link down below. Okay, if I add, let's add that field to this form. All right, let's add add existing fields. There's, there's customer sense. Let's bring it in, drop it over here. Chop off that label. We'll slide it up here. Okay, let's try the same technique. And while I got my code window open, I'm just going to slide over here and copy this to my clipboard. Copy all that so I have to type it all in again. Same field name, though. All right, let's go to this form's timer event. So open up. All right, go to events, scroll down. We'll set the timer interval to 1,000 milliseconds. Go to timer. All right, paste all that code in there. Should work. It looks the same, right? Same exact stuff. Okay, we'll need the current event, too. Let's go to form current right there. Let's put that current event, which is this, just this stuff. Copy and paste. All right, slide to the left. All right, let's save that. Let's see what happens. Customer list. Ah, everything looks fine. Nothing's running, though. Let's click down here. Okay. Let's click on Picard. Oh, look at that. Now it's running for everybody. Why is that? That's because in a continuous form, whenever you make a change to a field's property, it affects all of them. Okay? You can't just change one thing. If I set a field to background color red, all of them on the form change to background red. There is a way to get this to work, though. And I will cover that in the extended cut for the members. Want to learn more? Like I said, that technique only works in a single form. If you want the text in a continuous form to flash, it's a little more in-depth, a little more complicated, but I will show you in my extended cut. All right, here's what we got right now in the regular version. Let's go take a peek at the customer list. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cool? And when you click on something to edit it, it will stop the flashing just so it doesn't interfere. Sometimes a little more complicated code can interfere with the editing of data. So when you click on one of these fields in here to edit it, right, it'll stay off until you tab back to the ID field, and then it will start flashing again. Isn't that neat? That's covered in the extended cut. As a reminder, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, and gold members can actually download these databases from my website. We've got well over 100 tech help videos now and almost 100 extended cuts, so there's tons and tons of extra material for you to watch. How do you become a member? Click the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full-length courses found on my website, and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select All to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the Show More link below the video to find additional resources and links. 
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my Tech Help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free Access Beginner Level 1 course, more of my Tech Help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.